Hello friends, I'm Larry with Ride Stand Ride. I'm at the Salem Roadster Show with Jason Clifford. Jason, good to see you again. Hey, nice to see you too, Larry. The uh, hot rods, mini hot rods, and they are called tot rods. <laughs> How did you come up with tot rods? I don't know. I'm I'm stupid, I guess. I saw it on the internet after I after I looked it up. I wasn't I wasn't the original guy. You're not the original tot rods, so you're tot rods too, is what you are. Right on, man. So how did this whole thing come about? Did you just wake up one day and say, I think I'm going to make cool, smaller cars? And by the way, they're they're big enough for, for adults to get in them, too. They're not the smallest ones I've seen. Yeah, you can drive them if you want to. I mean, they're not very comfortable to drive, but they're fun. I mean, they're fun to rip around in. So how did how did it come about, this whole let's make some... My, my, I'll tell you. My boss had a, has this little kid that... Uh, is really cute and he's one of those little kids that's always happy and stuff so you can't help but like him and I don't have kids and I was thinking one day that a, I was gonna build him a go-kart and I was looking at a wheelbarrow and I'm like you know you could build a, a tea bucket out of a you know out of a wheelbarrow if you knew what you were doing and so I started putting it together and it just started kind of spiraling out of control of what you know what I was gonna do and like putting the motor in the front and stuff like that. I mean, you don't see guys do that on their go-karts. It's it's not the perfect way to build a go-kart, really. It's just that it's really cool. And all the other kids should be really upset that they're not your kid because they don't have one. That's what kind of the idea was. Boy, do I agree <laughs> to that. You know, and the other thing is, is that we've, we've seen go-karts since we were little and, and they always have the direct line for the steering and you routed them out like it would be in a car. I'm mean, similar to what would be in a car. Well, that was a challenge uh, to get the uh, pitman arm on the side of the car, like what the nostalgic look was. But I figured out that you could put a one-to-one -one gear ratio, 90-degree drive box in them, and that's what I did. But it has to be a clockwise, counterclockwise. The first one I ordered was clockwise, clockwise after I had thought that out. And guess what? I was wrong. It was 50-50, and I was completely wrong. I bought a clockwise, clockwise, and you turn the steering wheel this way, and the car goes that way. So we had to redo that idea. Well, I actually went the other way with it. I was thinking, well, did it only turn one way and it would be NASCAR? But it actually turning one way and going the other way, boy, that, that might be a little more problem. Yeah, it, you'd have a hard time trying to teach your kids to drive if all the cars did that. So I have a bunch of dead kids. <laughs> so the, you have engines in them, though, that they don't look like the typical, you know, small engine that you would have in. I mean, what kind of performance do you get out of the, the motors that you put in? Well, they just got a, a, a really cheap little Briggs & Stratton knockoff motor, but apparently the guys really like them because they're cheap and they use them in all their little sprint cars and they're a good motor. Basically, China took the patents away from uh, Briggs & Stratton because they don't adhere to any patent rights anyway, and they made their own engine and it's a cheap little piece of crap, but it actually runs really good. You can take the governors out of them and they're a great engine. The, uh, one of the things I really liked in, in one that you did that has the plexiglass so you can actually see into the steering wheel area, the pedal area, how that all goes together, and then even in the back. That was really cool to see that. Yeah, I did that so that, because I try to tell people how I do stuff and they're just like, they look at me like I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> And I am. <laughs> you have you have quite a collection. I mean, you've got four of them sitting here now. How many of these do you take and do like for shows, or are these all sold to other customers, say, and then you borrow them back to show them, or what? what what's that? Well, no. This is the very first show I've taken them all to. So this one I sold to a guy after I made that one because he wanted one, and so I jigged up, and then I got all the CNC programming done, and I and then I came out with the design of the black one which was the right car and then I built the green one that's the you know uh, the right car also well you've definitely got them down and one of the things that we have noticed in your first show is an awful lot of people asking about <laughs> them interested and in getting business cards so you may be building a few more of these suckers you never know I'll probably build uh, some rollers the next time and I think it'd be a good idea to bring rollers here because there was probably guys that would have bought one yeah but uh i was gonna take them to the uh the portland swap meet but i didn't get any done i only got i only got one to sell uh the other one sold so i need to make another one but um you know i guess uh, tomorrow work. tomorrow i might be making ufos and i might be leaving this earth who knows <laughs> <laughs> just depends on what i feel like building <laughs> Well, I will say one thing. I don't know that I've met somebody that's going to be on your level for uh, 
being able to be creative. I mean, you have got that covered. So, Jason, I love what you're doing. I know all of us that have seen your stuff did. I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing more of it in the future. So thanks again for you bet. Thank hanging you. out. We'll see you guys next time.